Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to start things off on a bit of a downer um, with the expected rise in graphics card prices. So according to a report from DigiTimes, who themselves are quoting DRAM Exchange, Basically, we are expecting that DRAM prices, specifically graphics DRAM, could get more expensive by the first quarter of 2020. It is stated that the price for graphics DRAM can rise by over 5%. And you might wonder, okay, what is this actually caused by? Well, this is basically just down to supply. And most of these issues when it comes to extreme price drops or even price rises is just due to supply and demand issues and obviously all the major consumers of graphics DRAM are making the all-important switch from GDDR5 over to GDDR6 so obviously that GDDR6 is becoming more and more in demand and DRAM Exchange said quote graphics DRAM is more sensitive to demand change and other types of memory products so its price fluctuations can be dramatic as well with OEM clients raising their stock up demand Graphics DRAM contract prices are projected to increase by over 5% quarter over quarter, the highest among all memory products. They also said, quote, in the graphics card market, the majority of NVIDIA's shipments of graphics cards are based on the RTX platform, and most of these RTX cards use GDDR6 memory. AMD is also proactively destocking its older graphics cards with GDDR5 memory. The company has completely switched to GDDR6 for its latest Navi series of GPUs. In the game console market, Sony and Microsoft are still relying on GDDR5 for the PS4 and Xbox One, respectively. However, their next-generation console to be released second half of 2020 will be equipped with GDDR6 memory. The memory capacity of these upcoming consoles could be raised up to 16GB, which is twice that of current mainstream graphics cards. Given these developments, demand is expected to exceed supply for graphics DRAM in 2020. Now, of course, this is just expected. This isn't written in stone, but these issues that I mentioned about the supply and obviously the fact that it's only going to increase as the full-scale production of the next generation consoles begins, I would not be surprised to see this come true. So over 5% expected price ride for graphics DRAM, which undoubtedly is going to have a knock-on effect of the price of the graphics cards themselves, because obviously if the companies are having to pay more for this key part of this particular uh, product, then obviously they're going to charge more because of that. But speaking of graphics, we have some specs confirmed for the RX 5600 XT. Now basically what happened is that they were confirmed via a product listing on ASRock's webpage. Unfortunately, this listing has since been removed, but not before some screenshots were helpfully taken. So you will find the link in the description below this video, but it is 404 file or directory not found at present. So, with all that in mind, what do we actually see in terms of the full specifications for the card? Let's start off with the GPU. We see the boost clock of up to 1620MHz at 12.0GBPS, game clock 1460, and the ba base clock of 1235, so that 1620 is again boost clock. As for the key sp Excuse me, as for the key specs, we of course see a 7nm GPU here and 6GB of a GDDR6. We see one 8 pin connector, three display ports, and one HDMI. We also see, however, 36 compute units or 2304 stream processors. Now, of course, we have seen several, and I do mean several, performance benchmark leaks for this particular card over the last couple of months, and it is expected to beat the GTX 1660 Ti and 1660 Super and is expected to cost around the $279 to $299 US uh, price point. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, this card come out onto the market, do its thing and see how well it does because obviously we have had various benchmarks, most of them been like 3D Mark, Firestrike, um, that sort of thing. Tom Appysack has tweeted a ton of results, all of which we have covered over the last couple of uh, weeks slash months. But regardless, I'm looking forward to seeing more benchmark, more games, you know, how does it do in every scenario versus those two NVIDIA cards that I've already mentioned. So we're going to move over now to something a little bit different, as obviously the Steam sale is currently still on. But I've already mentioned some games from the Steam sale that I saw that I thought were worth mentioning. 
So let's move on to some sales elsewhere in the PC gaming world. So what I have here is a few picks from greenmangaming.com and GOG.com. Now I just want to say this is not sponsored, we are not sponsored by GMG, however in the link in the description below this video you will find a link to purchase games and we will receive a small commission if you purchase games through that link. So what do we see? Well we see a Blasphemous on sale, 40% off, making it £12.5. I covered this game as well back in the day, I say back in the day, I mean a few months ago. It is pretty much a 2D Souls-like and in my personal opinion one of the best. I really really enjoyed my time this game I do need to go back to it but it is really difficult unsurprisingly so it, it just, it's just punishing and sometimes I'm not in the mood to get mauled I'm not in the mood to mauled it's, it's Christmas you know anywho so that is definitely worth a play go check out my video if you're curious if it's for you uh, we also see a Resident Evil 2 being on sale here as well and I have to say, it's a really nice reduction in price. We see 72% uh, off here, £12.62 for Resident Evil 2. This is, of course, the remake, not the original. That would be a bit weird. But still, a really nice uh, reduction in price, given that the game, of course, only came out um, earlier on this year. And it is really, really good. And in my opinion, is one of the best games of this year. Will most likely be ending up on my game of the year list, which I do actually need to start working on writing. Anywho, so we're going to move on to something a bit more classic now um, on GOG.com, as we do see Knights of the Old Republic 2 at £2.69, not too shabby at all. Um, it is, of course, also on the GMG sale as well. Um, roughly around the same price, not too much difference in price on either case there. And we also see one of my favourite games of the year, Slay the Spire on GOG.com, 50% off, making it £9.79. I have done multiple videos on this game, I gush about this game at every possible opportunity. It is a card-based roguelike, it is very, very unique, one of my favourite roguelikes. I have put an obscene amount of time into this game, and as I'm speaking, I'm going to scroll down to uh, it on Steam, if I can find it. Where are you? Okay, so the current count, I've put 225 hours into that game. So, yeah. I would recommend it, let's just say that. We also have Katana Zero, 32% off, making it £7.69. Um, I really, really enjoyed this game. And I also did a look at on this one as well. It is very much in the sort of... It looks like a Devolver game. It, it is a Devolver game. As far as I thought, what I should say, you know, it's 2D stride scrolling, it's violent, it has a really cool, interesting story, it's got a really killer soundtrack. Basically, what Devolver do best. If you like your Hotline Miami's, your Mother Russia Bleeds, go check this game out. Very, very cool. And not too long either. So, if you're looking for something you can beat in a couple of days, but fairly cheap price, definitely worth a crack, at least in my opinion. Um, just a couple of other things that I want to mention from GMG. Um, you may recall that I mentioned that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is still quite expensive, um, even on the sale on Steam. It is ever so slightly cheaper on G uh, GMG. As on Steam, it is £45, I believe, and on GMG it's £41.08. Um, so still quite expensive, but cheaper than it is on Steam. But personally, I would still wait on that one. Uh, we see also Darksider 3 for £13. I've yet to actually play that, but it does look pretty good. And £13 is not a bad saving. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is also at £18. I basically just wanted to get the more expensive, um, more cheaper games out of the way so we could talk about the more expensive games. Because uh, £12 is quite a bit in these sales, I find. You can get quite a few games for really, really cheap if you wait. Still a pretty nice saving, especially if you don't want to wait quite so long as I do sometimes. <laughs> um, Sekiro is also reduced, but it's only 35% off and it's still £32. It's a, it's a brilliant game. That is 110% going to be on my game of the year list. Um, but... It's still quite expensive, that amount of money in the Steam sale, it's kind of hard push, I don't really, wouldn't really blame you if you'd be like, eh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on that one. Oh, and finally, just a few from the Square Enix sale, specifically on GMG itself, um, we do see Tomb Raider, the original reboot for £1.80, which is obscenely cheap, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is £2.40, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider is about £4.00. 
Um, for the game of the year edition for the original Tomb Raider, it's also five pounds. Personally, the DLC, eh, but you know, even for the base game, it's still pretty damn nice price. And even Deus Ex: Mankind Divided is three pounds sixty, uh, at least for VIPs. Anywho, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.